What could be more satisfying than making a needle felted taxidermy style rubber duck head? My name is Charlotte Allen and you have reached my channel, The Felting Alchemist. Today we're going to be making a rubber duck head wall mount and it's super cool, super kitsch and I think it's a really, really great gift for anybody at Christmas and it's really easy to make. It is quite a time consuming project but the end results are really effective and I can show you a really good hack to speed the process up of making this. So let's have a look at what you're going to need to make your taxidermy style rubber duck head this tutorial you're going to need around about 400 grams of wool and then you're going to need to take some off for the head and the body for the duck so you're going to want to take off 120 grams for the head and then 230 grams for the body you're also going to need a couple of stockings so I've got some extra large ones here and if you go to this video here it will tell you exactly what you need to do in order to make your initial balls for your duck head and your duck body you're going to need around about 80 grams of a yellow wool bag and I've got this lovely merino yellow wool bats here which is in this kind of sunflower yellow but you could go with whatever yellow you like so you could go with like a lovely pastel yellow if you wanted to for a baby's room or you could go even more vibrant or mustard if you wanted to and then I've also got this orange wool bats here as well you're going to need around about 25 grams of this this is going to be for our ducks bill and then finally you're also going to need around about 10 grams of a black wool bats and this is going to be for our ducks eyes you're You'll also need a tape measure, some embroidery scissors, your brush mat, your needle felting brush mat, some polyamide thread here for hanging the duck later on, and your seven needle multi-tool. And then in addition to that, you're also going to need two twisted medium needles in a needle felting pen, or you could use three in fact to really speed the process up. And then you're also going to need two twisted fine needles for the surface work later on when we come to finish our duck off. So let's get cracking with the tutorial. So I've got my two stockings here that I've washed in the machine and I actually used alpaca wool this time and it's kind of been languishing in my cupboard for a little while now and I didn't really know what to do with it so I thought I would use it for the core of this project. So I've got the head here which I've used about 120 grams of wool with and then I've got 230 grams of alpaca wool in this tight here or this stocking. So all I've done is I've placed them in the stockings, I've put hair bands on the ends where I haven't got a seal so I've sort of sealed it up on both sides on this one here and then I've washed them in the washing machine with all the other clothes so I'm not kind of wasting energy on a wash of 40 on an easy care and what happens is it condenses everything down nicely and compacts everything together with the wool. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take off the hair bands. We don't want to waste the hair bands so I'm just going to cut beyond the hair band so I can slide the hair band off and then the girls can use those and then do that on the other side with this one as well. There we go, you can see my alpaca wool in here. So I'm going to leave the alpaca wool inside the stockings because it's quite soft and I don't want it to break apart. And then that way it keeps everything nice and together for when we add the core wool on top and start adding some additional bulk to our pieces. So I'm gonna move my head out of the way and I'm gonna bring in my body and I'm just going to give it a bit of a squeeze down and then I'm going to take my, my wool bats here which is my white Shetland core wool I'm just going to separate this out and I'm going to start adding some layers on top of my tights and my alpaca wool so I'm just going to put a few layers on top of each other and then splay it out place it on top of my tights and then I'm just going to take my medium twisted needles in my needle felting pen and then just start felting that down into my tights or my stocking and my alpaca wool just to get a nice layer on top initially and then once we've got all of this wool added onto this part of our duck we can then start adding additional bulk and start shaping it into the lower half of our, our duck's body our duck head so I will be back in a second once I've felted all of this wool down Right, so I've added the very first layer of core wool to my stocking, so I've got a nice ball shape forming here. So what I want to do now is add more layers to create more shape, get it larger, and also create some shaping around the chest area too, so that it's sloping downwards and then protruding outwards down as it goes lower. So I'm going to add my next layer of wool, and what you can do as you're doing this is just give it a good squeeze as well, because there's still some squidge in there too, so you can really start shaping it with your hands and get it looking nice and symmetrical. So I'm going to go in now with my next layer of wool. So I'm just going to start off again with um, a flat layer. 
I'm not going to be adding any additional bulk into certain areas yet. And then I'm just going to place another layer on top again, just to speed things up for me really. So again, I'm just going to pull this down over that top layer and then take my needles again, my medium twisted needles, and then just start felting that into the body. And eventually you should have something that looks like this. So I've now got four additional layers of my white core wall on top of my alpaca wall, which is inside the stocking. So I want to add another couple of layers of my white core wall over the entirety of this ball, just to make it a bit larger. And then I'm gonna add some shaping. So I will see you in a moment once I've added those additional two layers. So I've got four additional layers of core wall here on top of my alpaca wall, which is inside the stocking. So the next thing I want to do is I want to start adding some shape to this. So I'm going to take some more of my core wall and I'm gonna roll it into a bit of a kind of a Swiss roll shape lengthwise. So I've got three turns here of this wall and this is going to measure about three and a half inches in width. And then you want it to cover almost all the way down the sides of your body. So you don't want it to go all the way down. So probably about three quarters of the way down. So it looks something like this. So I'm then gonna take my needles and I'm gonna felt this down into position. So we're adding more bulk on top. And once you've eventually felted all of this down, it should look like this. So I've added the first Swiss roll shape to the top of the chest area. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna add another one now. So I'm gonna take another length of my white Shetland core wall. And I'm just gonna twist this over again. So I've got a similar size piece to the one I had before. And I'm just gonna place it into the same position and then felt that down too. So eventually your duct torso should look something a little bit like this. So this is measuring 10 inches by nine inches. So there's about an inch difference between the height of it and the width of it. And then depth wise, it's measuring on the higher side at about three and a half inches at the highest point. But as you can see from a side profile here, at the top part, it's slightly wider, it's slightly more pushed out, and then it slopes downwards as it goes down the rest of the chest. So now we've made our torso, the next thing to do is add our Shetland core wall to our head. So I've got the start of my head here in my tights. So I'm gonna do exactly the same thing that I did with the body a moment ago. I'm gonna add several layers of white Shetland core wall. So I will see you in a moment once they've all been felted down. Right, so your head should eventually look like this once you've added your layers of wool on. So I've added about five layers of the Shetland white core wool here onto the, um, onto the stocking with the alpaca wool inside. So this is measuring about eight inches on its length and then width wise it's measuring about seven inches, seven and a half inches. So it's nearly a sort of spherical shape, sort of more of an oval shape. So the next thing we need to do now is we need to attach this to our body. So I'm gonna bring my body in. So at the moment, he's looking a little bit like a snowman. So I've actually added an additional strip of wool across the chest of the, of the torso here. And then I've added another layer of wool on top just to add a bit more wool and get it a bit larger in size. So there's a real difference in terms of the head and the chest size. And we're gonna increase that more as we attach the two together. So the chest now is measuring um, 11 inches in its length and then width wise it's measuring about sort of nine and a half inches and then height wise it is at the highest point probably about just under four inches in height. So I'm going to put these two together and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to just take my medium needles, this is a bit tricky now because I'm going to press this against my chest so it can't go anywhere and I'm just going to start stabbing the two together but keeping them flat on the surface because we want to keep this flat so that we can then attach it to the wall later and it's nice and flush with our wall. So I'm just going to do a few stabs here just to start integrating those two pieces together. And then once they've been roughly attached, they don't need to be really secure, then we can start adding the wall. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of my white shirt and core wall again and I'm just going to place this over the top between my torso and my head. I'm gonna press it against my chest again just to give myself something to hold the item against. And then I'm just going to felt this down just to attach those two pieces together. And eventually you should have something that looks like 
this. So the two pieces are roughly attached here, but we've still got a lot of looseness around the back area. What I want to do is I want to integrate these two pieces a little bit more. So I'm actually going to add another strip of wool across the neck area just to fill that out a bit and just make sure that they blend more naturally together. So I'm just going to grab my piece of white shirt and core wool here and I'm just going to place it between the gap of the neck. And then I'm just going to take my medium needles and I'm just going to felt that down into place, making sure that the piece of wool that I'm felting is being felted into the head and also the chest area and keeping that thickness there as well. Don't spread this out because we want to kind of fill that gap a little bit. So don't feel like you need to really splay this out like we have been doing with the other pieces when we've been adding the bulk to our body. So eventually it should look like this so he looks like he's wearing a neck brace at the moment but what i've done is i've added another layer on top of the one i added on camera and i've just built that up a bit so there's more of a transition from his head to his chest rather than there being that big gap there and also it gives me that opportunity to secure the head nicely to the torso as well so i'm going to flip him over now onto his back now we've kind of got that bit in position and i'm now going to add some additional wall around the back of his neck and then just secure the head and the body together from the back end so i'm going to get a bit more of my wool i'm going to fit this into the gap in between and once again i'm just going to stab that into position and I'm still using my medium needles here. And because you've already attached the front, this should stay in position for the back. So you should get that nice flush back still when you come to hang him on the wall later on. So the head has now been attached to the body from the back end. So I've added another couple of layers of wall around the joint between the head and the body, just to make sure they're nicely secure. So I'm gonna flip this over. And what you'll see here is that I haven't got a lot of shape between the head and the chest. So I wanna get this chest a bit more kind of proud and coming out a bit more. So I'm gonna go back to my wall and I'm just gonna add a few more layers around this chest area here so that we're protruding from the line of where the neck and the chest are joining. So from here to really pull that out and get that nice and proud. So I'll be back in a second once that's all been added. So I've added that additional piece to the chest. So now from a side profile, this is standing out a bit prouder now and it's looking a bit more like a rubber duck's chest. So that is the very first part of our taxidermy rubber duck tutorial. In the next part, we're gonna be adding all of the lovely yellow wool to really make him start looking a bit more ducky. We're gonna be adding the polyamide thread at the back so he can be hung on the wall so he looks super cool when he's all finished and we're going to start planning his facial features as well so i will see you tomorrow with part two of the tutorial until then please like this video if you enjoyed it please subscribe to my channel because i'm posting every friday saturday and sunday with loads of needle felting hints tips and tutorials at the moment and please share this video with anyone that you think might be interested in starting to needle felt and fancies making a taxidermy duck head so i will see you tomorrow have a wonderful day bye